My name is Ann Barker, and I'm the director of the Guan Child Care Center at Monroe Community College. March 16th is the date that sticks in, sticks in my mind because it was that Monday we came back to, um, to school and I really didn't expect any children to be here at the center. So the center stayed open because we believe that we have a commitment to the parents of those children. Um, and when we reached out to them, there were not many, but there were about a dozen parents who were essential workers. They were social workers, they were nurses, they were doctors or they were our students who knew that they would not be successful taking online classes with an infant at home. And so we made the decision to stay open. I think we only had uh, two classrooms open at one point, um, but we were able to accommodate all of our current customers. The state was very happy that we remained open because at the peak of the shutdown, there was not enough child care for essential workers. Um, and so they were really people were having a very difficult time finding child care. And we were actually able to say, you know, we still could take a few more people. Uh, we were we were on a state website for essential workers in case they needed care. We decided then that we would stay open as long as there was a need. And what really motivated us a lot, I think, at that point was that we wanted the kids to be able to come to a place that they were comfortable, that they were familiar with. We didn't want parents to have more stress. Um, so we thought, you know, we're here, we can do it. We were not aware of even clearly how the virus spread at the beginning. And so we had to move our protocols as we learned more. And I think that that would be the biggest change. Uh, we did have an early outbreak. So in uh, April of that year, we had a child who uh, was tested positive for COVID as was the parent. And that then transmitted to one of our caregivers. And so, you know, we had to go through a shutdown notifying all of the families. Um, and one of the things that I will say about this is we were really nervous about notifying the families. And I remember sitting with the team doing it and the families, because they were essential services and were working in hospitals and nursing homes, they handled it brilliantly. Um, and so I think that was one of the biggest challenges. Once we got over that hurdle and we learned that, you know what, the kids probably weren't the ones transmitting it. Um, we no longer allow parents in the center. And I know that for those of people who've had their kids in childcare center, that sounds crazy. Like parents are not allowed in the building at all. They drop their child off to the caregivers who then transport the child to the room. But because the, the adults aren't coming in, um, we've had no spread since then. Um, and so none of our employees have gotten sick since then. Um, and we've been really lucky with any transmissions. We reopened two weeks later, but we made a lot of changes in our protocols. And I think the one that was hardest for me was saying parents couldn't come into the center anymore. So that's when we started, they line up outside the building. We had X's on the sidewalk, six feet apart. Somebody comes into the vestibule, what used to be our little welcoming reception area with our little library, the kids would take books home in. Now it's a screening area and we do the temp checks and all that kind of stuff there. So that created a um, new uh, job for all of us who worked in the office. And now as we stand today, I mean, I pretty much spend from 7 a.m. to about 9 a.m. just running up and down the hall, bringing children to their classroom. And the same happens at the end of the day to bring them back to their parents. So that was, that was something very different that we had to do. Um, you know, typically childcare is not door-to-door -door service like that. And, and then it also creates a disconnect between the teachers and the parents. And that's how we've been going since April of last year. We did have to close down one infant room because one of the children was positive. Um, and again, that, that didn't spread. Yeah, that was the only other time, thank heavens. And I'm knocking on wood right now. <laughs> Obviously, you know, we're talking about infants, toddlers, and preschoolers. So the idea of social distancing isn't in their realm of possibility. Uh, it, it just it just isn't. Um, our three and four-year-olds do wear masks. 
you know, to provide that layer of protection, but they're not six feet apart or even three feet apart during the day. So the children still get the social interaction with each other, with their teachers, um, and they, but they don't see the social interaction between their parent and their teacher. We definitely have upped, you know, sanitizing doorknobs. We're really big on the hand washing as we've always been. Now my Rochester City School District classes, they have to have strict pods. It's a child with a table, a shelf with all of the toys the child is going to use that day. Um, And they stay in that area. They don't share toys. And in that case, I think it is detrimental. The other obstacles were that um, as enrollment started to increase again, I had some staff that were very leery to come back. Um, I know with one of the people that was really, really hesitant, she'd been off for quite a while and was really scared to come back. And so what I did is I actually invited her to come in for an hour the week before she was coming back just to see the center. I mean, she'd, she'd not been out of her house for months. So that that fear was just like overwhelming. So she came in and she saw how we were doing things. um, And I think that made a huge difference. We had staff that was out of work, out of the building, didn't come in from say March until August. And then in August, we actually opened the center fully and we needed our staff back to work. I had some staff who really, really worked well to say it's safe here. I feel safe here. I feel safer here than when I go to the grocery store or when I you know, go to run errands. And that helped a lot. Um, and the fact that we stayed open and we didn't have staff getting sick, I think that really helped us when we brought people back. In the end, we didn't have everybody come back. We had somebody choose to retire early, um, but everybody else came back. Well, you know, in the beginning, it was, everything was so unknown and there was a sense of panic, I think, among the whole community. Um, So it was very hard in the beginning, I think, to understand why we weren't closing when everything, I mean, literally everything else around us was closing. We were not making breaking even for a long, long time. Um, We were able to get some CARES money to help support um, staffing. And the association did get a payroll protection plan that that helps with that. But um, certainly income number of clients was not holding us afloat. It's as good as we can get it right now. Um, And certainly better than if we were trying to do remote school for little kids. It's really challenging to have a three-year-old doing remote learning on Zoom. And so at least they're in the room you know, they can be redirected, they can have manipulatives to play with, they get to see each other. I think that we will be open in this manner probably through the summer. It is our hope that during the fall and the fall semester, we can trans, you know, transition into a more normal operation. Um, the staff have been amazing about getting vaccinated. I don't think it'll ever go back to exactly how it used to be. I think it will be modified moving forward. We've actually had families enroll children, infants, who've never been in the building, which kind of blows me away.